Patrick's art simplified. Uh, look, I'm going to do another small painting today. Um, if you have a look, it's not very big. It's just about a small card size. And compared to the image that I've got here, it's really been cropped down and I've shrunk certain bits of it. I've shrunk this bit and brought that down so that the, this part actually comes out around the house. Um, yeah, just really liked it because of the, the colors, the light hitting the um, shrubbery over here and on the rock just down here. And so anyway, yeah, I thought it would be a good little um, painting to practice with. So uh, let's get started. I'll just, uh, what I want to do, I want to wet this part quite a bit. Just get the paper nice and saturated. Now it's, it's all shrubbery um, around here. But it has a blue hue. It's like, um, I don't know, it's almost like a bluey mist. Um, and so it's a, a really nice light blue color. And what we'll do is we'll just basically hit it, hit it with that. It's not the sky, so it's not going to stay blue. There's going to, we're going to put um, different washes and uh, layering over the top of it. And hopefully the blue will still show through because we don't want to um, make it look like the sky in any way. It's may even add a bit of white but we'll see how it goes now one of the beauties of it the thing I like about it is the greens like the bright almost iridescent greens coming coming along here so I just want to whack some of that in right now because if you put in too much of the iridescent green it doesn't really matter because it's gonna um, you can cover it up it's going to be covered up with the darker greens or um, the browns for the rocks uh, they're quite easy to um, highlight cover the highlights and we just want even a little bit wider around here so it comes up quite iridescent green bright almost yellowy green And then even though those rocks over here uh, look like a grey brown grey colour, I want to make them more of a, uh, where is it? Like a, an Indian red. It will basically end up. Um, being uh, having browns and greys and stuff put into it but at the moment I just want to have that as the undercoat um, and then also I want to put that um, a bit more down down here sort of along that area because that looks like where it might be catching a bit of the light so 
So we don't want to don't want to make it too dark. And we don't want to cover the whole thing, so you can even just use a, a dry brush to um, let some white come through. So if you want to, you can just bring that down like that. And it gives it sort of a rocky look. The whole thing is, is it's not going to be um, just this color. We're going to whack some other colors in, but I just want to have a bit of that coming through. Get a smaller brush. Now, the difficult thing, I think, is going to be trying to, uh, like in here, to get some of the um, greens. But we don't, the problem is, we don't want them to be showing. very much at all and we actually want them a lot darker than that Now we've got this rock face over here where it's going to be going behind that so it's going to be darker but we want to also um, have it the same sort of color reflecting. It also matters the angle where you, you put the color as well. Because um, if you put the color in or the, the pigment in, if you have it coming out like that, it's going to be an angle uh, look like that. But if you bring it straight down, then it's going to be, it's going to look straight. And so you don't want to um, use the wrong uh, brush stroke so for instance like there's a little bit that comes across like that and then the rock goes up so it's a matter of just watching where uh, what angle it comes at uh, and just enjoying trying to put it in at about the same 
and that way you get your perspective and coming yeah like the perspective of the the actual or old picture will work because yeah I mean and also the values because it it comes out like that and then a little bit like this and then some of this lighter color And if it's um, if it's not light enough, if you have gotten uh, put in something that's a bit dark, yeah, it's not it's not good, but it's um, not the end of the world because you can always use uh, a gouache, a white gouache, and just bring out the highlights again. Now. thing we've got is we've got some dark greens coming in here it doesn't matter if it bleeds in a bit because it's really just putting a bit of shape in as if the rocks uh, are underneath and so it's not a bad thing if it bleeds a little bit won't do it at all. And the thing is, you don't need a lot of detail because all of this is quite uh, distant. And the other thing too is you do want it quite dark down near the roof around here um, and just behind it here because then that brings the, um, the lighter roof forward. So it's um you can just have really dark right near the top of the roof and then it can go lighter as it goes up. And the thing is is you because a lot of this is gonna get darker, you can just um have it sections of it where it's light. And the beauty of it is, is when you come up from away from where it's dark, like I'll bring this actually darker in here and in here. But once I, I bring it up, I'll actually just leave some of that highlight um, down there. And it looks like it's going up. At an angle, 
beauty of it is you just leave a little bit of the the white stuff and it looks like the white's just hitting it. So you bring it in a bit darker but if you leave some of those little um, green areas and just put in a little bit of dark or darker it looks like the light's just catching the edge of it and it's yeah it looks all right So it's already making the um, the building stand out a bit, which is yeah what you want. And then when you put um, when you do actually put a bit of uh, pigment on the roof, um, it will make it stand out still. It'll look brighter than what it is. Because I may, I may turn some of this area in here into rock, uh, but let's just see how it goes. So you don't want it. You don't want to put like a flat, um, flat wash, because um, it's or a flat, dark color. It's not. It's not going to uh, look effective. But if you just layer the, if you just layer the different colored greens. It almost looks that there's fluffy little bits of bush. Yeah, it's in darkness. It's in a darker area, but it's um, it looks like it's got a bit of substance, a bit of texture. And it's just mucking around, really. But you don't actually have to um, paint every leaf, as people say. And the beauty of it is. If you can um, lay um, enough layers, it comes up and it's very, very uh, like the the color is still vibrant. starting to look like it's got bushes and junk behind it, so that's good. Well, no junk. It's, it's, it's a, looks like a pristine place where no one has put any, thrown their rubbish or anything like that. So it's a, it looks like a place you'd like to be. I'd love to live there. And that, that's the beauty of it. Um, you can paint places where you may never actually live, but it's a place where you would like to be. And you can visit it um, through your art, which is good fun.
But if you know where this place is, you can visit it. I'm sure. And just using different, um, different little types of brush stroke to try and. Um, to make the uh, bushes look a bit more effective. And um, I've heard lots of people say, uh, you just look for color, the shapes. And I think that's a, a valid uh, statement because really the, that's all they are. If you look at uh, these, they're just, almost like eggs and then there's another one here and another one just there and then there's just like um, a little worm section there so you know you can you can try and build up uh, these different uh, shapes uh, in color and they don't have to be exactly what um, what's there Because, you know, like, okay, the person who knows where this place is, is probably going to go, yeah, well, that doesn't look quite right. But anyone who's never seen it is going to go, wow, that's nice. Um, but anyway, that's my opinion on it. Um, I really enjoy just practicing tripe. Uh, it is. It's, a, it's practicing. Um, and it's practicing to try and get greens um, because I, I find me personally anyway I find greens and um, like shrubs and um, places like this that have got a lot of uh, foliage I find them harder harder to do than uh, maybe architecture where it's set you'll know what it looks like you can whack bricks in you can put some boards in and as long as you do it reasonably um, in the right um, value it's going to look acceptable whereas greens and foliage and things like that you're not going to basically get away with it because foliage has shadow and depth and um, like there's if you look at it there's not really two places that you could actually say look exactly the same um, they're like a fingerprint the leaves basically reflecting light at different angles um, and Um, it's really a matter of um, trying to just catch that light where um, where you know like oh let's see what am I, what am I trying to say like just along here, um, if you have a look on there, there's actually flecks of white, which I'll probably put in. Um, where is it? I'll try to get on it there. Just in along that edge, there's actually like flecks of almost white, and I'll probably try and put those in um, using um, a gouache. But you see. It's not necessarily uh, pure white. But if you can get the value reasonably close, it'll, um, it'll look effective.
はい Excuse me. I'm just playing with different greens, like sap greens and、um, viridian greens, and as many greens as I can find. Look,、um, to be honest, you could probably、um, make more greens using、uh, a couple of primaries, like a blue,、uh, blue and yellow. You could probably make some. Amazing greens just by adding、um, the yellow and the, the blues. And if you've got a couple of different types of blue, you can add those. And it'll、um, it'll give it, I don't know, more depth, I guess. You know, I keep saying depth.、Um, it'll give it more character. That's a better way of saying this, guys. And I'm spending a fair bit of time just getting this this area because that little shed or、uh, cottage is the focal point, really.、Um, it's the main part, and so you want this to come down, and you want it to、uh, just be guiding the eye into that area. Yeah.、Um, The only reason I know that is because I、um, heard other people say it and got them to explain how.、Uh, it's not necessarily the, that I've got all this skill, which I don't have.、Um, I, I keep hearing、um, about Bob Ross, who used to say, "You know, like we just have happy accidents." <laughs> And it's true. I mean, in watercolor, especially, watercolor is an amazing medium、um, because you honestly、um, can't guarantee what the water is going to do.、Um, you can you can use it almost like a、uh, an oil paint. You can use it thicker,、uh, but In general, yeah, you're, you're not going to basically、uh, get it to behave itself all the time.、Um, let's see. Now, what I want to do is I want to get a dry, a dry brush almost, because that that roof, this roof, isn't. Entirely、um, covered. It's it's just got little flecks of the. It's almost a pink. Now, if you if you work on it and just lightly touch the edge of your brush, it will automatically just bring you little flecks of white and. It's not too bad,、um, and you can actually bring, if you want, you can bring lines through it. You don't have to, but you can. Now, that might even be a bit,、um, a bit dark. So what you can do is you can just get the、um, the water and hit that. Like that. Just use your <laughs> sorry, use your paper and just touch it. Now, one of the things that you do have under the edges, under the awnings, you have along here. You actually have shadow. 
Um, and then there's like a, almost a highlight. And then you've got another another shadow under here. And it's um, just a matter of using the uh, the lights and the darks to bring out what you're trying to paint. Because um, it was interesting, I when I do a bit of photography from time to time, and um, I've used some of my photos for paintings. And what it is though is. Photography is light, painting with light, um, and I found that you can actually do exactly that, you can paint with light. You can take a camera out, put it on long exposure on a dark night, and then you can pick the object that you want to um, photograph. And when I say a long exposure, I'm saying, you know, 30 seconds. Um, and you don't want it to be pulling in a lot of light, so you change your f-stop and stuff. Anyway, enough, enough. Um, and then what you do is you get a, a torch, and you hit that object with the torch, and you can actually run the light over it. Um, slowly or quickly and if you leave it in one spot the camera actually picks that area and brings up um, the light and you can actually do some amazing work with it but anyway this is about painting with watercolor not light well it is but it's not Okay, so what we want to do, I want to use, I'm using a bit of um, Moon Glow. It's a, a Daniel Smith color. It's basically, a, it's got a purple tint. It's actually quite, um, oh, what do they call it again? It does... Um, granulate, that's the word I was looking for, granulate. It granulates, which is um, a really useful thing when you're doing rocks, because it actually uh, gives the impression of multiple colours within the rock. And it comes up really nice. Um, I really like it. And it's a uh, it's a good colour for, I like it for shadows and um, stuff like that. And the thing is, is you can, you can actually get it um, to look like shadow. It's, it'll actually, um, what it'll do is it'll um, give you a glaze over another colour. And that will... Um, still show through whatever you've got underneath will continue to show through and it looks really good I think anyway yeah you know, some people may like other colors uh, different things but I kind of like moon glow it's a nice it's a nice color it's a nice um, it's got a purpley ready tint to it um, and except it gets a bit muddy, another color I really, really like using is um, sepia. But you've got to be careful because it it does get quite muddy uh, if you use it too much with other colors. Uh, so this is just trying to get the darks 
underneath. Underneath the, um, the bushes here. And see, it's already giving it a bit of an undulating depth. Like I may darken this section in here because that section in there is a bit darker. But you've got to remember, I'm I'm doing my own thing here. I'm I'm changing this because uh, I've dropped bits, but I'm still using the basic shape. Um, for instance, you know, like under here where this join is. The house what isn't in this one, the house isn't there, it's the house is over here. But I've moved the house back or shortened this whole area. So what I want to do is I want to try and um, bring that like it's got its crevices because uh, you don't want to you don't want to have the crevices looking um, flat just because you see there's always rocks coming jutting out unless it's a cave I mean, and this isn't a cave um, and I like the color of the, um, the moon glow over the over the red off the not red um, Burnt Sienna, I think it is. And the thing you've got to look at too is um, we're, all we're doing is just trying to do similar shapes. Whether they're in the right uh, same spot or not, doesn't matter. Um, I just want the shape to, to resemble what's on the pay, uh, picture doesn't have to be exact but I need it to look similar and moon glow is quite good because it does lift quite well so if you put too much you can actually bring it bring it out and lighten it considerably Yeah, this isn't um, isn't going to be perfect, but it's going to be all right. I'm going to enjoy basically doing it because it's um it's a beautiful place, as I said before. And uh, if it's if you if you like what you're painting, it, it makes the job um, so much easier. It's enjoyable. It's if you think to yourself, eh, I would like to be sitting. I'd like to be sitting where this photo is taken from. Um, as long as it wasn't freezing or yeah, you know, not all that. But yeah, you know, in general, if I was rugged up and had my watercolors with me, I think it would be absolutely fantastic. Now, let's see. If a bit of the um, uh, burn, burn number, no, yeah, the burn number can work in here. It's got the brownie color to it, so it's not too bad. Now, if I can get a light enough. Because there's no actual... Um, nothing that's really, really white. But... 
it's there are lighter areas and so now because this is coming around I wouldn't mind bringing in um, actually some of the oh, I think I'll do that I'll bring in some of this um, moon glow as really the um, dark shadow over here Yeah, take it up that way. Oh. Yeah, it's... <laughs> it's coming along. It's not bad. Not great, but it's not bad. Now, so, what we want to do... Let's see if we can't bring this color, this in here. I don't know that might work. I just added um, a bit of the moon glow to the greens here. Actually, that's not too bad because when something's further in the distance, it gets a bluer, a bluer tint to it. So even if we added a, a bit more of a a blue, a, a pale blue uh, to the colour, then we can actually get that on top of here. And bring it up so that it looks like it's going off into the distance and it'll actually bring forward um, these trees here and these mount, uh, these rocks here Now, you don't want to overdo it because I'll have to deepen some of this blue up here, I think, because that's actually looking um, almost like a cerulean blue. See if I can just brighten that up a bit, just a tad. <laughs> so, um, the blue is nice. And if we keep adding a bit of green to it, because we don't want it to be just blue. We've got to make it look like there's actually some foliage back there. Too, is we've got, we've got dark foliage down here. I 
and we want to make that stand out a bit. spots yeah because it's a bit wet um, this dark color is bleeding in uh, the darker green is actually bleeding into these lighter greens and uh, it gives it a nice soft um, feel like it's uh, they are actually just bushes up against a, a rock face. I'll probably darken those up a bit more. But we want uh, a darker brown coming down here. screen on the edge here as if for some reason this little rocky outcrop um, has some foliage growing off the side of it but It's got a lot of a lot of texture in the rock, but you can't see a lot of it because it's actually um, it's um, in the shadow, so you can't see a lot of it. But it's there, and so what you want to do is you want to you want to hint that those shadows are coming from the bushes and you might actually let these rocks go into that James Gray mixed in with that because you really want a bit of dark. like a bit of a rock and then we want a bit darker down here and then we want this dark and come down okay well, let's see if we can't just make this really look like that's actually a corner because 
it's it looks like it looks like it's going in and then coming back out around want a little more detail into this and nothing too much and what I might do see how it turns out if I get um, it's called um, oh what's it called again yeah. Gosh, I keep forgetting the names of these things. Buff titanium. If I get the buff titanium and things work and some things fail but I just put that in there give it a bit of a highlight doesn't matter so let me try that again with a different brush that brush is a bit what you call a bit stiff for that let's just see That's better. See, it's it's not showing up as well as it's actually working. So. So, I don't know why, but it's just not quite doing the way I want it. But anyway, it doesn't matter. We'll just uh, work it as it comes. You know, let's just get into this, this buff titanium stuff. And, well, how I said it had the white along the edge, but not white. Um, ah. let's see how this looks it's getting there slowly but surely it's getting there oh yeah now what we need to do is try and darken up just around here a little bit. Not too much, just a tad. Now, just got to work out what what I want to do here. Like this so if I can just bring these color this color this brown um, and bring it down now it's gonna have to be dark um, with a tad more gray I think but what we'll do is we'll just try and fill this in. Like this.
there's no real white highlight uh, anywhere. So I can actually go over the whole lot of that pretty much with the lighter brown. Because what I'm going to be doing is finding a darker brown. Um, and maybe some of this buff titanium. It sort of gives it Actually, it'd probably work better for the roof. <laughs> um, yeah, I just looked at that colour and thought, eh, that would probably go pretty well for the roof. Now, not all of it, it's just got little flecks, as if it's dark. Whether they're um, meant to be shingles or what they are, they're meant to be, I'm not sure, but I reckon putting them in a little bit like this. So you don't want you don't want it to be too too intense. That's all right. We'll go for a bit more of this. Why not? Whack a bit more of this intense green, this vibrant green just here now, side of the house. So, we want darker. I don't know. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a bit of sepia um, into the mix of uh, buff titanium and uh, raw umber. So, if I can use that, then let's see if I can actually use that a bit to, um, in actual fact, that's a great colour for the under the eaves. Um, and uh, some of these areas that look like they're a bit split open like their boards missing or so yeah just basically make it look like it's um a bit cracked and a bit ramshackled and not too bad. Now, it's a great colour, but just a bit intense, a bit dark. So, if I add a lot of water to that, and then use that to pull down some of the, the intense colour, I may actually get the look of um, the shadow that I want. And the beauty of it is, <clears throat> it's colour that's already there. 
or pigment that's already there. as well. Now, the thing I did like is basically how I just want to whack a bit more of this but um, So it's a bit like that, a bit dark is what I want. Oh, looks like somebody wanted to come in. Hello, do you need something my love? You're on video, you're going to be on uh, going around the world. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll go on a walk. There you go. Um, it never turns out the way you expect and you get to go on a walk with your beautiful wife. So anyway, if she wanders out for a little bit and lets me just finish this bit up, I'll go for a walk with her. Now, just want to make a little bit of a, uh, a hint of a, a shape or a uh, uh, like almost an opening like that and then a bit like that and then you want to have that a bit darker <laughs> I must admit looks better on in life than it does in camera but um, anyway I am going to go for a walk with my wife and then I will return uh, at a later date to finish this off. So I shall, it'll seem like nothing to you, but it may be an hour or two. Have a great day. Oh, well, back again. Oh, God. Okay, here we go. I better put this on. There we go. Okay, you know, back again. Uh, what do we want to do here? Do we want to wax some brighter colour? I mean, a bit of lightness in there, as if it's just give it that edge. There we go. That's hopefully it comes up good now. We just want this to come down here. Okay, I just want to get this this edge of this building happening here. Yeah, looks a bit rough around the edges, but it's meant to be an old shack. So, I don't know, I think it's coming up alright. I can't complain. So, what have I got to do? Um, now what I've got to try and do is bring this bit in here darker. Let's see, how about we try something different? How about I whack some water into this? Put the water in here. Oh. 
that save mechanic gets really that great. Let's see how it goes. See it. <clears throat> now, the beauty is, if you have a look at it, it's sort of coming up because of the wet and wet. It's sort of coming up as if it's already got um, like bushiness in there, and it's um. So you don't want to have <coughs> have it all blacky black. Now. Because you don't want it all just one, you want to blend it in. So what you do is just get a bit of water and then you just slowly bring the colour in like this. And then that way it almost seamlessly, wow. I don't know that seamlessly, but <clears throat> actually it's not looking as stream smooth as what it does um, in reality. <clears throat> so I need a bit more of the really dark green. But it's um it's one of those things you just need to <clears throat> to put it in so it, it basically blends almost seamlessly and then the thing you gotta look at too <clears throat> is that pushes this forward a bit and you can actually do um, a bit of negative painting uh, so that yeah, it, it makes it look like there's holes in this yeah. a bit like that so that it doesn't actually just blend in completely I just want it to push that forward a bit and the darker it gets the darker it gets the further back or the more in shadow it, it looks see it it, it sort of gives it a bit of depth up where you know like down here I still should have it a bit dark because down in the crevices or well not crevices but down in the um, the floor of the valley it would be quite shadowed and so what you've got is really just <clears throat> lots of green <laughs> lots and lots of green. Uh, now, I want to make all of it tie together the best I can. Now, personally, I think it's coming up alright. It's not... It's not the uh, most perfect um, blending I've ever done. Or, yeah. Now that's the, the beauty of it. Like, 
here, okay, it's got depth. And in here, it's got depth. But what I've done is I've really just brought this, this section down here closer in so that it doesn't, um, yeah, so it actually encapsulates. Encapsulates. That's a good word. Sounds like a coffee. My coffee was encapsulated. No, um, sorry about that. Uh, what am I doing? Anyway, so it's coming along. Now, I might try and this just needs to be darker down here because it's not going to be just light. There's got to be shadow as well. There we go. That's sort of gives it a bit more shape. Now the only trouble is, is now I've got this um, this building in here. I'm not a hundred percent certain how they actually got there, <laughs> how they got there to build it. But yeah, that doesn't matter. Now the thing you got is. Apparently it's got a um, bit of dark area down here in front of the, the cottage. But where is the door? It must be on the other side, I'd say. I'd say that the door is on the other side of the cottage. No, that's all right. We don't need it because we're not going in. We're just looking at it from the other side. That's it. Still waiting for part of it to dry, but in general, it's not too bad. It's got some looseness, it's got some um, tightness. Uh, I could put a few more rocks in, but I think it's alright. It's just a, a cabin in the woods. Uh, How's it looking? Can it, does that focus on it? Yeah. You can always um, get back to me and tell me what you think. Because it's... Uh, <clears throat> all it is is uh, something that I thought you might want to see. And the, the thing that um, I wanted to show is it's really this but the composition's changed. It's made the, um, 
cavern bigger and more of a focal point. Uh, and you know, I cut out, I cut out a lot of the. There's like a, I think it's a river or a snow or something down here. I took that out. Um, yeah, that could be a tree for all I, I know. That could be just a massive old wooden, um, an old oak tree or something. But it's a cabin in the woods. Anyway, hopefully uh, it was interesting. And yeah, well, thanks for joining me. And I hope I didn't rave too much uh, or bore you. Anyway, I'll make a, a speed up, speed up version and uh, put that up on um, Instagram and then I'll put the full me raving on and talking nonsense on YouTube. Anyway, have a great day and this is Patrick from Patrick's Art Simplified. Have a great day.